I'm here in Miss Wise's classroom right now, one of our fourth grade teachers, and it feels kind of unusual because everything's packed up and there isn't that liveliness of being here at school. Um, thank you again to Mrs. Casabo for emphasizing how important the behavioral side of things are and how we try and reward our students that are being respectful, responsible, ready, and safe. Those things are critical, again, for that behavioral and social and emotional understanding and growth when you come here to LIC as well on the academic side that we try and emphasize that effort is the most important thing. No matter where you come from, the minute you come in here as a fourth grader, it's a new opportunity to reinvent yourself and it's really about your mindset that you can always get better wherever you're at. This next slide, and there's gonna be a numerous amount of slides coming, coming here. We're gonna stay here in Ms. Wise's room to explain them all. It has to do with band and orchestra. Um, there's going to be some introductory videos coming out. You're going to see there's a difference between uh, band and orchestra and who the teachers are and some of the instruments that we provide for demonstrations uh, and lessons that will be coming up. So keep tuned, stay tuned, and look forward for that as it's coming up. Now, what does fourth grade day look like? Uh, again, the arrival time is between 8.40 and 9 o'clock. That's when the school buses pull in and when we have everybody dropped off uh, by parents or guardians. We usually do about two hours of English language arts. We follow the reading and writing workshop model here. For math, it's about 90 minutes long, and they do a number of different things, including some station rotations and games to really try and solidify a strong understanding of our fourth grade curriculum. We also have what's called enrichment and intervention times. We call it win time, what I need, W-I-N. Uh, there's 30 minutes of reading for that each day. There's also 30 minutes of math each day for that. And then during the, throughout the, the year, you do about 45 minutes at a time of science or social studies, and then we do some changing around. There is a science test in fourth grade that is associated with our state standards test, as well as an English language arts and a math test. So there are some uh, added rigor to the academic side as you come here to fourth grade. Our dismissal time is just the same as every other elementary is at 3.30 time as well, too. What does specials, lunch, and recess look like? Uh, you have two days of music, 30 minutes long, two days of phys ed for 30 minutes long, and one day of library for 45 minutes, and one day of art for 60 minutes. You can see some pictures of different areas. Uh, you can see our gym, our art teacher is out there with one of our students that she created an art piece. And you can see in music class, when you get to sixth grade, you get to learn to play the ukulele. It's a really cool one. Um, you also have 25 minutes of recess and 20 minutes of lunch. We try and emphasize having that longer period of recess slash lunch time. We give, more, we give more time to the recess time because students are usually, as they get older, able to transition quickly into the cafeteria uh, and eat within that 20-minute lunch period. So we want to get you outside and playing as much as possible. Get your energy out. Get ready for the rest of the afternoon. So some differences between, I'll move this a little bit so you can see, differences between third grade and fourth grade here. We do some switching for classes. We do some flex grouping based on some uh, pre-assessments that we take in some of our core classes. We also, you'll see a lot of changing around during our intervention and enrichment period, during that win time. People will be moving to different areas, seeing specialists. Um, if somebody is in special interest, they would go see Dr. Snyderman at that time. Uh, but we really focus on the data and, again, seeing where you're at now and really trying to push you forward. The homework expectations, you're going to have daily reading and math assignments. It's really important that we emphasize that you still get that practice. However, we really want you to communicate with us if this was too hard or it took too long. Um, it should be an opportunity for you, again, to practice. And, um, you know, we don't want it to be an extra burden. We want it to be another opportunity for you to practice some of the things you've been working on in class. So we really emphasize that parents reach out to parents and guardians, please reach out to teachers if homework is becoming a, a difficulty so we can make adjustments and change as necessary. And we also have Study Island. It helps us assess and understand our math, English language arts, and science. There's spelling and vocabulary. Uh, fourth grade really emphasizes a lot of the Greek and Latin roots that help you not only understand how to spell things, but it helps you understand new uh, and unknown words. And then we have content projects that would be in the science and social studies area as well, too. Some important things, and this might be more for the, on the parent side of things, is that we have um, our grade book where we're keeping both our formative assessments and summative assessments. 
Uh, make sure you're checking those frequently. We actually teach the students how for, how for them to how to check their own grade as well too using the iPad. And if there's ever a question, please reach out to that teacher first. Um, many times that when there's an, a misunderstanding, it's cleared up really quickly via an email or a phone call. Many of you have been getting used to Schoology during our online learning. Our fourth grade is very heavy into uh, use of Schoology in the online learning platform. We consider it like a digital notebook. There's important calendars in there for you to organize your day. Assignments will be in there, discussions, projects, quizzes. It's really important for you to be fluent with Schoology and parents. I know that you have and guardians will have an account as well too for you to go back and check. There is a website there for you to be able to check from our tech department how to sign up for a PowerSchool or a Schoology account if you do not have one. All right, I keep having to move my picture. I keep blocking it there. The iPad use, um, as you're, many of you during this online learning process have become very familiar with the iPad, we do consider it a learning tool. We ask that you monitor it at home. As kids get a little bit older, they have a tendency to maybe experiment and use the iPad in ways that they shouldn't be used. We really emphasize that it is a school tool. Um, we do have a feature called Securely that helps us that helps the district filter some of the things that are being typed in there. But again. It is a fantastic tool. It's an opportunity to be able to have students be very creative. Um, I can remember when I was teaching, it was difficult because you'd have to sign out the video camera to be able to do projects and things like that. Uh, it's right in the students' hands now. It's an amazing feature, and I'm so glad our district invested so heavily in their iPads. Uh, make sure they're being charged at home. That's part of our being ready, uh, one of our components here for being successful here at LIC. Make sure they're charged at home because we use it quite frequently throughout the day as well as those offline activities. Um, we do have brain breaks throughout the day. We do allow them sometimes to use some of the brain break games that are on self-service. We just try and emphasize the students not to go searching on the web to try and find different games. The self-service games on there are approved and safe games. And it is our expectation that we're, like as before, we we're gonna teach our students to be responsible here but to be responsible users of the iPads. Attendance, again, this is also critical to our student success. If you're not here, it's hard to teach you. So it's really important to make sure that you're attending school when you're feeling well. If you're not feeling well, there's 10 parent slash guardian notes. Um, you can write that they were absent. Uh, we can accept up to 10 of them. After that, we would need doctor notes. Um, frequently what we have an issue with is the note gets sent with the student in the book bag and it doesn't show up in our office. So I also put our uh, one administrative assistant, Mrs. Carrie Detter, she takes care of all of our attendance issues. So many times what parents will do is write down this email address so they can just go ahead and uh, email her if there is an absence or they'll email the teacher. If you email uh, Mrs. Detter, then it's, it goes right to her. If you email the teacher or me, eventually I forward it to the, we forward it to Mrs. Detter anyway. I emphasize to you that to put into pre-approved absences begin as early as possible. I do this at back to school night as well too, because if you have a vacation planned in March and then your child ends up getting sick over a few days, I can't approve that absence unless you put it in very early in the school year. If I put it in early in the school year and your child ends up becoming sick and we get beyond that 10 day mark, then we can at least go to the doctor and get the doctor notes. Any absence that's longer than three days, three days or more, we will still need that doctor note. Um, that's uh, exclusive of the 10-day note, uh, the 10-day uh, notes from parents or guardians. If you get to that three days or more, if somebody gets really sick and they're out for those three days, when well, we need a doctor's note. And as I explained it before, anything beyond 10 days, you'll also need that doctor's note uh, for us to be able to approve that absence. Some security features that you should know, we do fire drills. Um, once a month, in intruder drills, we have a lockdown drill in which we stay here at the school and we explain why we're safe because of all the measures that we take here at LIC. We also do what's called an evacuation where we talk about a lockdown and then if we would need to leave the building, uh, that we go to our rally location. We have severe weather drills uh, that we perform here at LIC. We really emphasize and hope that you update your contacts in PowerSchool that way, if somebody is not feeling well, or if we need to get a hold of you, we have the right phone number or email. When you are coming to pick up your child, make sure that the driver's license, uh, you have it with you. Uh, even if we have known you from before, uh, having a child come through LIC, 
it is a protocol that we want to make sure that every person is following, that they show their license when they're picking out the student. Uh, and that comes back to updating the contacts. Uh, if somebody's coming to pick up the child that they are on our contact list, we would appreciate that. We do buzz you in one at a time. So if you arrive and somebody else arrives, we ask that you wait and come through the doors at that time. And when you do uh, buzz, hit the buzzer, uh, you just push it one time and then state your name and your purpose. You can see that we follow the Atlas model when it comes to, <clears throat> pardon me, when it comes to security, we teach our students this through stories and presentations. Make sure you stay connected. You're gonna see a nice little picture of all of our all-stars. These were our students that were rewarded for going above and beyond. Uh, anytime students go above and beyond in their growth, achievement, or success, we give them an all-star award. And we put it back here on this uh, area back here. And then if a whole row gets filled up, those people win. You can see we try and celebrate as many of those students as possible. Uh, but uh, make sure you are connected with PowerSchool and Schoology. We do have an LIC Facebook page. We also have an email blast that'd be really great to get connected to that you get daily, weekly emails from us at LIC. Um, we have some Twitter uh, users here, including myself. I'm the at LIC Decker. We have our school districts. This is Mr. Molesky, one of our fourth grade teachers. Ms. Cardone, another fourth grade teacher. Mrs. Allen, uh, our, our instructional tech person. And then Mr. Bowers is on here as well too. He's one of our sixth grade teachers. We also have our PTO page linked to our website as well too, which is a great way to stay connected and get involved as um, a person to be able to give back to our school system, uh, whether that be through time uh, or other means to be able to make sure that we provide a fantastic education for our students. I know this was a shorter presentation than, than we normally would have, and typically I would take questions at this time, and there was fantastic questions on when we'd have our fourth grade orientation, things that I may not have thought about beforehand, but I wanted to put up two email addresses. One's my email address, Ian underscore Decker, and I know it's hard to see this, there's not an underscore symbol there, at hemfieldsd.org. I'll be able to help you answer some questions um, about what it's like to come here to fourth grade, uh, also, Mrs. Kate Casabo is our school counselor that you met before. There's her email address, too. Again, we really look forward to you coming here at, to LIC. It's a fantastic place to finish up your elementary career, and we're excited for you to come back here when we get reopened. Thank you.